If you have decided to seriously consider purchasing a home here in Chicago or anywhere at any time, really, the second thing that you should do right after you get your pre-approval done with a reputable lender is find a real estate agent you can trust and that you like to work with. At the risk of sounding a little bit self-serving, because I am a real estate agent, you know, I'll, I'll just uh, touch on a few of the reasons why I think this is uh, such a big deal and why I take so much pride in what I do for my clients. Um, because I do think that, or not, I don't think I know for a fact that working with a good real estate agent and good being kind of the uh, the key word there. Not all real estate agents are created equal. Um, uh, it will 100% save you time, will save you money, and will definitely save you stress. And the ways that that, that those things will happen specifically is um, just, A, the education that we are bringing to the table. I mean, we we have a number, we have to, had to take a, a month-long class to, we had to pass a, a test that is not that easy to pass. We have continuing education. We have many of us uh, have decided to take our education further and pursue um, different industry designations that kind of make us uh, expert in, in niche niche areas. Um, you know, so especially if that niche area is something that pertains to you, that's something that um, that you might want to look for in a in a realtor. And then that's not even to mention just the this, the keeping up with the market, all the day to day stuff. I mean, the, uh, especially now. As of the time of uh, recording this, you know, the real estate market moves so fast. Uh, you really have to know what's going on out there um, in all the different areas and micro areas and um, macroeconomic trends that reflect things going on on the block by block level and how these things all relate to each other. I mean, it's it's not there's a lot going on. And then there's and that's just like the numbers side of it. You know, that then there's what what are the tastes that people are into nowadays if you're selling your home what what are the buyers looking for if you're a buyer what should you be looking for what's what's good what's bad i mean there's you know there's i, I can go on and on i mean there's so there's so much uh there's really so much to this that you're just not really going to know by watching a couple episodes of some show on hgtv you're just not um, another thing that we bring to the table is uh or like that at least that we should be bringing to the table is referrals to other professionals that you're going to need throughout the course of a real estate transaction or even just your uh, lifetime as a real estate owning person. You know, we uh, will have access to contractors, inspectors, attorneys, accountants, lenders, designers, architects, you know, the, the list goes on and on. Um, roofers, I mean, whatever, you know, we, if, if, I can say for a fact that if, if I don't necessarily have that exact person in my Rolodex, I know, give me a day and I'll, I'll have some good recommendations for you. And I, you know, I'm sure most, most real estate agents can, can say the same thing. Um, and they won't just be like me, you know, Googling stuff and just saying, here you go. It'll be uh, me, you know, going, going to other agents who I trust who have done these things and have worked with these people and, um, can, can have like some firsthand knowledge of it. So, so that's a huge deal. Um, you know, unless, uh, you know, I, I doubt that most people as they're, um, unless they're in the field, unless they're in the industry as well, probably don't have, uh, just immediate access and relationships to all those different types of people. So, you know, that's a big deal because there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of different people involved in a real estate transaction, um, title companies, uh, you know, what I, <laughs> I, I can just, things just keep coming to my head and I spout them out. But um, I think you know where I'm going with that. So access to more opportunities even. I mean, if you're, you know, right now as I'm, again, as I'm recording this, it's a super tight market out there. There's way more demand than there is supply. It's been like that for a few years. In my opinion, it's gonna, it'll probably be like that for a few years more. Um, no idea, I don't have a crystal ball in front of me, but I see no reason for it not to. Real estate agents, you know, the, the good ones who are out there um, and really, you know, doing what they should be doing and knowing where, knowing where to look and how to, how to network and that kind of thing or having access to different, different resources. Um, they, we, we have access to, to things that aren't available on the, uh, just out there on, on the internet. Um, there are um, off-market properties that we catch wind of and, you know, all kinds of things like that. I mean, it's I'm not going to sit here and say that there's like a ton of that, but 
um, any little any edge you can get in today's market as a buyer or even as a seller who's going to have to buy eventually. You know, uh, those those little things matter. So um, access to more opportunities is a big one. Data access and interpretation. Um, you know, look, we all have access to a certain amount of data out there if we know uh, what to what to look for. I mean, there's. I don't think I can say the names of the of the, of the websites out there, but um, we, we all know the ones. Uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of data out there. But real estate agents, man, we pay a lot of money for some databases and some um, some tools that are really go above and beyond what you can find for free online. And um, knowing, obviously, knowing actually how to access it and how to manipulate that data and get the get the answer to the to the question that you're actually looking for is is key, and that's a big thing that will separate um, one realtor from another. But um, being able to interpret that data in a way that makes sense to uh, to their clients and what their specific um, situation is is a very very huge deal, and uh, you know can't can't be dismissed. And then, you know, having all that knowledge, having all that market knowledge, the ability to um, to interpret the markets and the data and all that's going on will also help with your negotiation. You know, your your agent. This is, in my opinion, you know, the negotiation part of it is really where the the agent comes into play because there's you have to navigate all these different people, all these different personalities that have different goals in mind. Um, you have to understand leverage. Uh, who who has the leverage here? Who doesn't? Um, you know, if if you don't have somebody who understands that, you might you know be you might go into a situation where there's a there's a property that if you want this property, you need to be offering five percent over the asking price if you even want to have a chance. But if you don't know that, if you don't know all this data, you've in the, these market trends and where things are and um, what, you know, how tight the markets are and things like that, you might go in there and uh, just say, like, oh, I'm just going to lowball this offer on this place that I really want. Just kind of hope that that works out. And again, you'll, they won't, they might not even respond. They'll just laugh, laugh it off. So there's things like that. Um, and yeah, so just understand the leverage and, all the different uh, components that go into a negotiation is a huge, a huge deal. And the, yeah, this experience and all these different situations. Um, Cause look, inevitably I, it's like one in a million deals where it's just perfectly smooth from the beginning to the end that hardly ever happens. I mean, there's, Oh, there is going to be something that comes up uh, that throws, that throws everybody for a loop. There's something new. Like the, every deal has something that, you know, nobody involved has seen before in quite that same way. So it's knowing how do we navigate this? What what do we do? What, you know, even like what's a situation that your agent has maybe seen that was similar to that? Or maybe it was the same the same exact situation, you know, like how do you handle the how do you handle stress? How do you handle this this certain thing? You know, there's there's a lot to be said for having uh, for having somebody representing your best interests in those situations who actually knows um, and has experience and has emotional intelligence and just uh, normal intelligence, you know, all of it that goes into these different situations and, uh, just kind of being the project manager, um, coordinator for the whole transaction and, uh, quarterbacking you from, from the beginning to the end. So that's, you know, just, just in a nutshell, what a good real estate agent can do. And, you know, the kind of the kicker on this is, uh, at least on the buy side, you, I sh- I can't, you know, it's not free, but you don't come out of pocket for your agent on the buy side, at least, at least as of the um, recording of this video. We, on the buy side, the agent normally, like 90 something percent of the time, will get paid out of the proceeds of the sale off of uh, the listing agent will split their their commission with the buyer's agent essentially as um, as like a co-op for finding their seller, their client, the seller, the person who's going to buy the property. OK, um, so, you know, it, it, you are paying your agent indirectly because it's uh, because that your your agent's 
payment is coming out of the proceeds of the sale, um, which is coming from you. But, you know, that's all getting settled at closing. So there's not like there's anything usually. I mean, some agents do handle this differently and charge like an upfront fee and things like that. There's a lot of ways that different ways to go about it. And there are some rules about this that might be in flux and might be changing soon. But as of now, you know, that's that's kind of how it goes. So um, so some people, you know, a lot of people might think like uh, if I'm um, not working with a buyer's agent, maybe I can save money by um not having a buyer's agent and you know whatever my buyer's agent would have made i can just negotiate that off the price and that's not necessarily how that works because like that that somebody's making that 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 money and it's going to be um like it's already it's already kind of baked into the deal based on the based on the uh, the agreement that the selling agent has the listing agent has with their client, the seller. So that's kind of getting into the weeds a little bit, maybe a little bit more than um, we need to for now. But you know, in a nutshell, that's kind of how that works. I'm Jake Lyons. I am a real estate agent with App Properties. The agent you end up working with uh, does not have to be me. Obviously, I would love an opportunity to uh, to hear you out and see what's see what's going on and see if we could be a good fit. But um, just as an advocate for my industry and um, a believer in the work that we do, I do hope that you do hire a real estate agent that, that you vibe well with and can uh, help you achieve your goals. If you've liked this, um, if you've liked this video and gotten some good value out of it, I hope you choose to subscribe. If you haven't already done so, hit the bell, uh, share it, like it, comment, do whatever the thing is that indicates that you liked this and want some more of it based on whatever platform it is you're watching this on. And um, I'll move on to step three of what uh, of the of the, the five steps of buying a place. And um, yeah, that's all I have for now. Awkward goodbyes as always, and I'll see you in the next one.